Hey family, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host Khadija. And of course, I want to reiterate that there is no, uh, I don't want to get it twisted. I'm not for racism. I'm not saying that any of these things should be happening. I'm saying, given an, like I said in the previous video, if given an opportunity, um, and in a perfect world, a world that wasn't full of hatred and racism and all those things, you probably could let people board a train randomly, right? Because you wouldn't see that that would be the human family for the majority of us. How the lens that we would look out and see our fellow human being. But y'all know good and darn well that's not what happens. So what does happen is that people are making choices. So some of these choices we don't like. However, they are choices. Right. Um, and while I try to um, uh, kill a few more seconds, I can share with you um, the difference of how Western media is portraying these situations. And you can see the biasness in it. And so my thing is, you can't change a person's mindset. Uh, you can't change it. Okay, this world has been predicated up on lies, right? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. So the people who constructed this and took the European countries and decided to invade all the rest of these countries and take over all these countries Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you're seeing the end result of it when you've constructed a world on white supremacy. It doesn't just stop in America. These are people who actually think they are superior because they don't know the history of America or themselves. They don't know the history of their history of being in caves until they were civilized basically by Moors. They don't know any of that stuff because, again, the European has worked very hard to keep the real information out of schools, out of their lives, off the grid. That way they can preserve this mindset of how great we are over the whole world and the whole world sucks. And Europeans are the shit. However, most people that are melanated know that that can't be true because nine tenths of the world population is people that look like me. And the K, the, the people who are only a tenth of the pop of one tenth of the population has no, um, let's see, no, Thoughtful right to be controlling the rest of the of society unless it was designed that way. Because there is no way in the world one tenth of y'all will control the rest of us unless it was some shit put in place. Some something in the milk ain't clean. So y'all divided a plan and it took hundreds of years to get it to run it like a fine-tuned machine. And it was implemented in parts in parts. And this disease has spread it all over the world. It's called white supremacy. So as you listen to the reporter's report, tell me what y'all think, okay? Check this out. You've seen the situation in Ukraine. You've seen how the world is responding. Now let me show you how the world is covering this invasion. I'm talking about the media, especially Western channels. How are they covering Russia's invasion with blatant racism? Let me say something at the outset. As journalists, we do not filter hardships and pain. We do not see caste, color, or gender. And we have stuck by this principle. 
When the Taliban stormed Kabul, we stood with Afghans. When Ethiopia attacked its own people, we questioned them. When unarmed black teenagers were gunned down in the U.S., we joined the outrage. Today, we are doing the same. We see the plight of the Ukrainian people, and we have reported on their hardships. But what about the Western media? They, too, are reporting on the crisis, on the war, on the refugees. But they do not see hardships. They only see race, the color of your skin, the color of your hair. Let me show you exhibit number one. This exchange happened on the BBC, the so-called guardian of unbiased reporters. Listen to how their panel describes the refugees from Ukraine. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. People with blue eyes and blonde hair. That is why the so-called expert on the BBC is emotional, not because the people are homeless, not because their country is being invaded, but because their hair is blonde. On social media, a lot of people are defending the BBC. They say it's a guest, not their anchor. Let me take you back to September last year. Another guest was speaking on the very same channel, South Asian expert Christine Fair. She called out Pakistan's links with the Taliban. Do you remember what the BBC presenter did? She shut her down. She said it was violating the channel's unbiased coverage. So exposing terror links is a violation. Blatant racism and white supremacy is fine. Gold standard indeed. Now for exhibit number two, NBC News from the US. Listen to this. These are not refugees from Syria. These are Christians, they're white, they're, um, they're very similar. Very similar to us. How so? Because the Syrian refugees are Muslims, their skin is darker, their hair is not blonde. So Europe does not want them. And remember, this is not being said at some white supremacy cult. This is happening on live television. Yep. Exhibit number three, CBS News, another American broadcaster. Their reporter is appalled by the war, not because there is death and destruction, but because it is happening in Europe. Now, like Iraq or Afghanistan, this is a relatively civilized a uh, relatively European uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. Civilized? In Afghanistan are uncivilized countries. Their people are uncultured. Their regimes are irresponsible. So they deserve war. They deserve hundreds of bombs and years of occupation. What about Ukraine? The most According uncivilized CBS, people no, in the Ukraine world. Ukraine does not deserve like war that. or hardships because Ukraine is civilized. And now for the final exhibit. This one is not from the West. It is from Al Jazeera in Qatar. This anchor simply cannot comprehend the idea of European refugees. What's compelling is just looking at them, the way they're dressed. These are prosperous, I'm going to use the expression, these are prosperous middle class people. These are not obviously refugees trying to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. That reporter is confused about the refugees. They look middle class. They look like Europeans. How is something so bad happening to them? Well, this is what systemic racism looks like. Do you remember the 2015 refugee crisis? Around 1.3 million people sought asylum in Europe. Most of them were from Syria, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. Do you remember how the West reacted? They shut their borders, they herded the refugees like cattle, and they branded them as terrorists. Back then, Western reportage was quite different. Let me show you what the BBC did. They prepared seven charts depicting the refugee crisis. Let's focus on chart number five. Which European countries are most affected? Now remember, this war was in West Asia. The bombs were dropping on West Asia. But this was the BBC's big concern. Which European countries are most affected? Now just to be clear, we welcome what Europe is doing to host Ukrainian refugees. They deserve all the help. Our question is, why just Ukraine? Ukraine is not a member of the European Union. It is not part of NATO. So what explains this level of assistance? Racism. You see, Ukrainians are Europeans, hence they get the red carpet, but Africans and Asians get border crackdowns and refugee camps. Western media is part of the problem, I have to say. They reflect the public mentality, their sense of European supremacy. And the problem is, governments are not doing anything to help. In fact, they're adding fuel to this fire. 
Let me show you what Bulgaria's Prime Minister said about refugees. I'm quoting. These people are intelligent. They're educated people. This is not the refugee wave we have been used to. People, we are not sure about, we were not sure about their identity. People with unclear pasts who could have been even terrorists. That was a European head of state. He's openly calling West Asian refugees terrorists. If this does not expose Western hypocrisy, nothing does. They invaded Asian and African countries. They waged war. They committed war crimes. And when the people fled, they shut their borders. What does this tell you? That refugees were never the problem. That money or borders were not the issue. The issue was race. Think about it. Rian is now available. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, I mean, there really, uh, I want to thank uh, Gravitas for that um, uh, uh, little segment right there. Uh, and that right there is what I say in a nutshell. That's why you cannot, I don't, I can't for one minute try to minimize that the racism is not showing this big ugly head like it always does. Okay? And until I think people of color really take their power back because it's not just black people or what they call uh, descendants of slaves. It's anybody that's brown. Anybody that does not have what they said, blonde hair and blue eyes. So I just feel that the people who have melanin in their skin should take their power back. That is my only, only uh, wish, prayer, and desire for the melanated body to understand how closely they are connected uh, and to understand um, that since they don't even want to acknowledge lineage, even in this country that I'm in, then it is up to the people who have the melanated uh, bodies to be as a um, uh, in penetrable force collectively. And I know a lot of people don't like that, but that's the only way I think because just that reporting alone lets you know how deep that hand goes. Um, suffering and human suffering is abound everywhere. But when you hear blatant racist reporting like that, you can't help but get angry. You can't. You cannot help it. So it is up to us to love each other because John Henry Clark said we have no friends. And that is something that we really, really better take into consideration and really let that penetrate our morsels. Right? All right. That's just my opinion, y'all. Tell me what y'all think. You like what you hear? Like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, share the channel. Um, let's continue to grow the channel. Uh, and I appreciate you being there. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well, okay? If you want to donate to the channel, um, all the links are in the description box below. And we'll see you in the next one.